Hi, it's Mr. T here. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the explaining on, sorry, on how to explain the ratio of ionic compounds. So in the Achievement Standard 9094, there's a specific question uh, that appears almost every exam that relates to explaining why it is that an ionic compound has a specific ratio that it does. And we do that by explaining how ions are formed and the ratio on which they combine. So I'm going to go over that in this video. Right, um, so here you can see I've drawn some uh, diagrams for two atoms, lithium and fluorine. Um, we're going to see how they would interact each other, these elements, when they come together. Um, if you look uh, for the lithium atom, you can see it's an electron arrangement of 2, 1. And the fluorine atom has an electron arrangement of 2, 7. So obviously in order to get a stable, full, outer valence shell, the lithium will lose or donate one electron and the fluorine's happy to accept one electron. So this lithium atom will donate its electron long to the fluorine atom and hence we get the fluorine and the lithium ion. Now remember how we got the ions from our last video. If you've looked at it, if not, um, Make sure you've subscribed, go back and look at my previous video and you'll see I've, I've done a video on how ions are formed from their atoms. Anyway, we can see here that we've got three protons, two electrons, so the lithium ion is going to have a charge of plus one. The fluorine is going to have still nine protons, but now it's got ten electrons and it's going to have a charge of minus one. Therefore, we get these um, symbols for the iron so the lithium has a one plus up the top because it has a charge of of one and the fluoride has a minus because it has a charge of minus one now right just some fundamentals about electrostatic charges or positive and negative charges so if i put a negative charge uh, near a positive charge both of them are going to feel an attraction to the opposite charge so what happens is a negative ion and a positive ion will once, so once we have the lithium and this fluoride and they become negative and positive, they're going to be attracted to each other and hence they're going to come together and join. They're going to form an ionic compound. So now one thing that we often think about ionic compounds is they're written as, in this case, uh, LIF. We think there's one lithium ion and one fluoride ion actually grand scheme of things it doesn't work that way what happens is when you react lithium with fluorine you're reacting millions of lithium atoms with millions of fluorine atoms and what they do is they produce millions of ions so if we have a lithium ion the fluorine fluoride ions will be attracted and surround the lithium ion and then the fluoride ions will give, be surrounded by are there lithium ions and this will go on uh, so on and so on for thousands or if not millions of ions will be replicated in this way this is called a lattice a repeating lattice it's a pattern and this pattern is in three dimensions it goes up ways sideways and depth it goes back into this uh, into the screen you're looking at so this is actually what an ionic compound is but when we write LIF what we're actually writing is the ratio. How many positive ions are there to how many negative ions? And in some cases, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. In some cases, it's a two-to-one ratio. Now, we need to be able to explain why it is the ratio that it is. And this, these are the types of questions that we have to be able to uh, write an answer to. So, uh, as you can see here, this uh, ionic compound has a ratio of um, lithium fluoride or one lithium to one fluoride. So let's hit look at this example here. Now the atoms on the left and the right are lithium atoms and the atom in the middle is an oxygen atom. If I want the oxygen atom to get the two valence electrons it needs to get a full stable outer shell, it needs to get a total of two electrons from two lithium ions uh, atoms because the lithium atom can only donate one electron because it only has one in its outside shell so there we go they donate they're really happy remember now this oxygen in the middle is now an oxide it's a two minus and the lithiums on the left and the right 
R1 positive. Okay, so they're going to be attracted to each other and they're going to combine in a ratio that is a 2 to 1 ratio. Now, the reason they do that is they have to produce a neutral compound in the end, a compound where the negative and the positive charges will cancel each other out and there will be no charge. So if we look at the lithium here, we've got two positive charges and the oxide, we've got two negative charges. So I need two of the lithium ions to cancel out one oxide ion. Therefore, I write this as Li2O, where the little two down the bottom repre represents how many ions of lithium are needed for every one ion of oxide. Right, so now that we, uh, what I expect you to do now is go back and look at the previous, uh, I guess, five minutes on the video and make sure you really understand how it is that these ions form and why they might combine in the ratio that they do. Also, have a general understanding that the ratio just means how many um, lithium ions there are to every oxide ion. And here it says there are two lithiums to every one oxide. Now, we need to, in the back of our mind, kind of need to know why that is. But we also need to be able to explain it in a very clear um, way. So I've got uh, an exa example here of how you might answer this question they'll give you. And this is a specific type of question they give you um, in this paper, in this uh, describe aspects of acids and bases. And they're always going to ask you to uh, describe why this uh, compound, this ionic compound, has this ratio. Now one thing you need to remember of course about the ionic compound is it's always a neutral compound. The positive and negative must be equal and cancel out to make it neutral. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to state, well, how many electrons did lithium lose and what iron is it and how many uh, electrons did oxide gain and what is the charge of its ion? So that's the first um, part to the answer. So here I've said that, I've said that the lithium of, of course loses one electron and it's outside so it becomes the uh, lithium plus ion. I don't need to go into the detail that I did with the previous question on the previous video because now they're not asking about the detail of why it become an ion. What they want in this question is they want to know well why does it combine in the ratio? Why do the negative and positive ions combine in the ratio that we're given? So we make sure we just say for each one of these two, why it is they become the ion that they did quickly, succinctly. And then the next part we do is we summarize how many electrons are being exchanged here. So in this case, we have um, we need two lithium ions to supply the total amount of two electrons that an oxide ion needs. So we need to make that clear that there are two electrons being um, exchanged but we need two lithium atoms to give that total we also the last part we need to say as well is we need to clearly say that this is so that the compound will be neutral so we're making a neutral compound and we're going to say that okay again we need two lithium ions the total charge of two plus now the total charge of the two plus will cancel out the the uh, minus two charge of the oxide ion. So in the last uh, part of this answer, we're not saying how many electrons are being exchanged. We've already, already covered this. We're saying, okay, we know the final compound is neutral, but to, in order to be neutral, I need a total of the same positive charge as the same negative charge. And I have to say where the same positive charge came from, from two lithium ions, and where the total negative charge came from, from one oxide ion. So this is what we do is we cover each one of those three points. How is it that the iron was, um, how is it that the iron has the charge that it had in the first place? That's point one. The next part is, okay, how many electrons would be exchanged in total if I, re if I reacted the two different types of atoms together? And how many atoms of each would I need to do that exchange? And the last bit is, okay, we know that the final compound is neutral. So how many of each type of iron do I need to make sure I get the exact charge that will cancel out? 
And this is how we answer the second question. So if we look back on the first question I did on the previous video on the second question, that covers the most of um, one full part of this, uh, this exam paper. So this is uh, going to take you about 20 minutes to answer both questions. I hope this has been helpful. Um, make sure that you press subscribe if you want to uh, make sure that you get any other videos I put about answering these questions uh, in the next wee while. And also make sure that you like this video if you find it helpful. Cheers.